is the Glass Cannon Network. Anywhere you go, I'll follow you down. Any place but those I know by heart. Name that band. Skit. Gin Blossoms. Name what gin blossoms are. Kate. Flowers that grow to make gin. Correct. <laughs> That's right. That's where do you think gin comes from? Right. Sydney, what are gin blossoms? They, oh fuck, I was going to say. Don't okay. Google. I'm not, I'm not. Let me um, see those hands. I was legitimately going to say what Kate said. I was like, where gin comes from? I'm going to say gin blossoms are uh, um, a rude name for a lady's something or other. <laughs> That's a good guess. What? Things went well guess. with the uh, young lady the other night, and I saw I, her gin blossoms, gin blossoms if you know like what I mean. Yeah, maybe like the late endearing. 19th century, yes. maybe something. Exactly. And I like how the best alternative word you could come up with was something or other. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have one other term in your, your vocabulary? I can't use the word in the definition, so I had to say something Did or other. Did you usually say gin blossom? <laughs> now, <laughs> drink, Joe... Uh, Joe, as the first among us who will get them, uh, <laughs> I think Skid and I are the only ones that know. Do you know what they are? Uh, is it something to do with the nose? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like alcoholic nose? Alcoholic nose. Yeah. Yeah. When what you, the hell is that? All right. So if you, if you uh, ever man, see anybody that's got a fucking nose actors, that like, is like blown out, like all the blood vessels in their nose are broken. It's from, oh, it's from years yeah, of alcohol it's, abuse. It's burst capillaries in, yeah. in the face from- Wow, from, you can't have any fun. You do too much Coke, you fuck up your nose. You drink too much alcohol, mm -hmm. you fuck up your nose. You just can't mm -hmm. all do anything. All comes back to the schnoz, yeah. Wow. That's why uh, I, I mean, you mushrooms. can see, it looks like cauliflower nose for people yeah. who've like really got it uh, bad. I remember seeing this dude I used to work with. I didn't see him for like eight years and then we were on a- I was hopping a train back from a Coldplay concert in New Jersey, and he was on the train track. And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking to myself, like, holy shit, his nose gin blossomed out in the five years. And you he's know a big, who, big drinker. Anywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I always think of, and I'm assuming this is whatever a, a gin blossom nose, mm -hmm. is W.C. Fields. Oh, that of course. That is always course. like That's my like, bar. If you the, look it up in a medical textbook, look up images of W.C. Fields. That is Jim Blossom Nose. Oh. I think of Seymour Cassell. Uh, yeah. The actor Seymour Cassell. He kind of, he didn't have it as bad as other, but like whenever I think of a Jim Blossom Nose, I think of the actor. What about like, uh, didn't yeah. J.P. Morgan have it? Or was that, that was something else entirely. J.P. Morgan? Yeah, like the original, like the man J.P. Morgan. Didn't I imagine a guy with that amount of money used it on booze and had some, had some Jim Blossomy Nose. J.P. Morgan Nose. <laughs> 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 Did you mean J.P. Morgan knows K N O W S? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, suggested Google searches. What was up with J.P. Morgan's nose? Oh wow, that is oh. what a mess. Oh, he had rosacea. That oh. is, yeah, that's what they so said. That is gin blossom nose. It like literally they pop and they start to form little. Like honestly, it's like cauliflower ear. Um, Why did they name their ear. band after this? <laughs> So it sounds like they were young and cool. Otherwise. They were never going to get gin. They'd be dead before they got gin blossoms. Think about what the name Pearl Jam means. I, right? I don't I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Pearl Jam. Think about it for a second. Is it like a clam? Oh, uh, yeah. Did you know what Stone Temple Pilots' original band name was? No, what? I can't know? say it, but it was Shirley Temple's you know what? Oh, and okay, they yeah. their label their Shirley Temple's tap <laughs> shoes. <laughs> shoes, and that was just <laughs> unacceptable in the UK. Like, no, 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 you'll never be hard. And they were like, "You got to change that." And they were like, "We'll keep, we're keeping the letters STP." Hold on, hold on. In an early promotional interview, Vetter said the name Pearl Jam was a reference to his great grandmother Pearl, who was married to a Native American and had a special recipe for peyote laced jam. 
Right. Is that the reference you were making, Skid? No, and that's, that's <laughs> certainly certainly not what he intended. <laughs> that's what the I, internet told me. Oh, well, that he better had a sense of humor. I'll tell you that much. I yeah. do like I do like when you're like in a when you're in a band and you're giving interviews, you're fully expected to just make shit up. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you're not, like what, what what's even the point of being in a band? <laughs> Where does I like Matthew- the original their original band name is the best band name though ever, which was Mookie Blaylock. Like one of the best, like middle tier NBA players ever. Wait, that was Pearl Jam's original name was Mookie. Yeah, their Blaylock? original band name was Mookie. <laughs> they just called it some Mookie Blaylock. They were just like, I don't know if you can name your band after a guy, it's... like a living guy. You're starting to get too popular. It's like, all right, we'll name it after something that comes out of a man's thing. We t- we talked about uh, <laughs> about um, the Beatles a few episodes back. Who knows what the the Beatles' original name was? The bu- the bugs. <laughs> no, it's that. Uh, so the Quarrymen or something. The Quarrymen, yeah. Quarrymen, yeah. Well, is that that's before? That's when it was just the three. It was just John and Paul and it's pre Ringo, Pete, Pete Best, Pete Best, yeah. Pete Best. Right? Yeah. Is, is that even pre George or is George and George and the Quarrymen? Can't remember. I don't remember. But every band should have two names: their pre star name and then their star name. Yeah. We were originally. Uh, Grand Funk Awesome. That's right. <laughs> Grand <laughs> Funk Awesome. And then we we pivoted around episode 20 to the Glass Cannon podcast. Not a lot uh, of people know that. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Grand I Funk was just awesome. reading about the, the the Who operated under a different name for a period because they had a, like a different manager for a moment. Like right, right before they became famous, they like were do, they did a bunch of performances. I can't remember what the name was, but it was like, I yeah, that's not. Again. That's, yeah, well, one of the, no, no. that's one of the funny things about Spinal Tap is that, that scene where they're going through all the band names that they had. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Cover. God, that movie. Such a good movie. <laughs> the Who were the Detours and then the High Numbers before the they High were Numbers, the, I think, is the one that they oh. like. Was it, they, had, they had like been, they were the Who and then they changed to that and then they went back to the Who. <laughs> I feel like the Who, maybe it's just because of the awesome stuff that they made. That must be, but like, I just feel like that is such a cool band name. I don't know. Like, how do you. It's so simple and yet so transcendent. It's, yeah. It is a, it is a, I mean, they're a cool band, but that is a great band name. <laughs> God, <laughs> and it really I, is. And if I, I completely, if they had never happened and I said to you, like, what about a band named The Who? You'd probably be like, that's weird. I don't, it does, <laughs> it doesn't click. It, it would need to, like, it need a minute to solidify, but let's God, workshop that so a bit. Good. Yeah. Are they going to be confused about who you are? How about The Detours? <laughs> <laughs> way worse way worse <laughs> it's kind of uh, like the who it's like who it's like where are we it's similar <laughs> similar kind of concept it's like the band yes that's a cool name yeah, yeah. That's a, not that's as that cool, a cool of a band good band, good yeah, band. Yeah, they got who. some good tunes yeah not as good as the who but yes what do you call yes 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 <laughs> who's I on think phil hartman tonight. did a couple of their uh, album covers did he? he drew the album covers? Yeah, he. I, I'm not sure if it was yes, but he, <laughs> he drew a lot of album covers like before he went into comedy. He, that was his main gig. Was, really? Was, yeah. I want to see who introduced them on uh, Saturday Night Live. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and yes. gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which celebrity, uh, celebrity would that have been? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> A Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> My favorite Twitter account. <laughs> who, who is that? That's Dion Warwick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh gentlemen, a tribe called Quest. <laughs> oh, it's exactly what you said. It's like such a like such a like a time Next. capsule. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Speaking of time capsules, last week is going in mine because I love that app. So when when I make my time capsule, I'm taking that recording and I'm shoving it in there with a ton of condoms. <laughs> I don't worry about that. my time caps. I don't get that. It's mine. We have a yeah, it's just like a time capsule filled with condoms and a note that just says, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that that a band. Congratulations band. on yes. opening the capsule. Have a good time. <laughs> You're <laughs> welcome. Can we just talk about Pearl what you Jam. think a time, ca- time capsule is, though? Yeah, I think he's confused about how time capsules work. <laughs> I know how they work. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever put anything in a time capsule or been present at a time capsule opening? I did back in like grade school, like sixth yeah. grade. Yeah. 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 When were they supposed to be opened? 
I think I, I think they were opened uh, like probably twenty years later. This was maybe nineteen. I'm dating myself here, but nineteen eighty eight. Maybe I was in sixth grade, and uh, yeah, no, but that, maybe oh, maybe it was nineteen ninety, and they were going to open it in two thousand ten, hmm. which seemed crazy. That twenty years. <laughs> we'll all be yeah. dead by we'll then. All be dead. Ten years, you seen Terminator. Be- yeah, that's right. No, when when my parents like renovated and they were like, oh, let's have fun and put a time capsule in the wall. Kid, put something in it. And I wrote a letter, which I don't recall like at all, but it was probably, and like there's no like open it. This It's in the wall of the house that like different people live in now. So if it's ever renovated, they're going to find it. And like 10 year old Kate wrote a letter. Don't know Do you- what it says. Do you think that like when you die, like, you know, many, many, many years from now, your ghost will go back to haunt that space and be one of those ghosts is just like pointing at the wall. And so for <laughs> the family to like to open up the wall and they think they're going to find like. That would actually be pretty cool because there was already a ghost in that house. So I would have company. I'd have oh. a friend. There you go. I, I just know, wonder. I know what you're doing for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> Haunting my old house. That would suck, though. <laughs> like, you're trapped in your old house by a letter you wrote when you were a kid. I mean, I do other things, too. But like, every once in a while, I come back and be like. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, if you watch those ghost hunter shows, there's always two type of ghosts. There's the trickster ghosts that, like, they act like kids. They like to just mess mess with stuff. And then there are ghosts that are tied to something there, and they're just yeah. caught in an endless loop. Uh, I mean, why can't everyone just be the trickster ghost? That sounds horrible. You're just caught in that endless loop. But when they do, like, the recordings, they only pick up certain frequencies, you'll hear people like, no, <laughs> no, the stairs. And then other people just, hee, 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 knocking over a shoe. I want to be that yeah, ghost. That's a way better ghost to that's, be. That's, that's much more of a Troila Valley ghost. Ex- I mean, like, there's no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, absolutely. Either way, that's what Troy's ending up as. Oh, the but it, stairs. <laughs> Troy's going to be trapped in your most emotionally <laughs> intense moment for all of eternity or until they tear down this building. That's terrible. Oh, that awful. Would suck. Yeah. It's awful. Poor you one. Not over shoes. Better, Matthew, did you read The Haunting of Hill House? Oh yes. Do you like it? Yes. Yeah, it's it's Beautiful. very good and legitimately scary. I had I had problems reading it late at night. Is the I show good? The, the show's good, right? Book. Yeah, I love I mean I love love Shirley Jackson. Um my like I <laughs> Sydney is uh, I know. trying to I hide know. behind something. Uh she, <laughs> in, a, in another podcast of ours Sydney sh- shat on a book that is my favorite book of all time. And uh, I this, said, one of I, I said I would read Haunting of Hill House because I didn't enjoy We Have Always Lived in a Castle. And I just wasn't, everybody, you know, hypes up Shirley Jackson. And it was the first Shirley Jackson book I read. And I should have read Haunting of Hill House first because that's the one I think that everybody really, really loves. And I will read it. I assume you never read it, Troy? No. Yeah, it just feels to me like. I think you'd like it insofar as it, it feels very real. Like it feels yeah. like a very not real what you think haunting of a house. Like, yeah, my yeah. brother in law was like way hot on the show. He's like, you got to watch the show. You got to. Well, watch the, show the show is also beautiful, but it like it is not the book at all. They just take oh. like names and elements of the book and kind of throw it in a blender, oh, and it's actually like amazing and it's beautiful and one of like the best structured seasons of TV I, I, ever. But it's very <laughs> it's not it's the a book. completely different story. Maybe I'll give it a give it a gander. Um, I've just been too busy reading about tonight's app. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you prep this one? Yup. Did you prep it this one? Be that yep. town. All we're doing is going to <laughs> see the yellow guy. Let's yeah, go to see the yellow, the, the yellow guy. The yellow guy. The yellow guy. What could go wrong? The king and John. What oh could go wrong? <laughs> the guy what and could John. go wrong? <laughs> the king and John. The king and John. John. John does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, have we ever considered that the king in yellow is just a guy with John? It's very sick. And gin had a gin blossom nose. Uh, Dude, I heard gin blossom John nose. Just, and he he's had got real a, liver damage and capillary shit on his nose. Medicine check on him. Is he just very ill? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you no. Know, the, 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 it turns out the yellow king isn't some like transcendent mental <laughs> destroyer of worlds. He's just a booze bag. It's, yeah. just, a, it's just a really prime example of cirrhosis. Bring a curtain, being like, I'm the king in yellow. I'm going to split mine. By the way, are any of you t- uh, AB positive? Because I need a liver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm having jaundice flashbacks. Um, 
Oh yeah, oh, that was yeah. a dark time. Sorry, that was a dark time was, in my life. Yeah, we got to get it. Really well acquainted with uh, old man Billy Rubens. <laughs> old man Billy Rubens. <laughs> <laughs> <And> Billy Rubens. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think it's it's only fair that I just uh, I want to take you to the map here as I explain what you see. Take it to the a, map. A beautiful map. Um, now remember the last time you were here. Um, this is before we were working with our, our, our newest good buddy, Dave M, who was making the map. So I the carav caravansary map that we used uh, the first time was the Paizo map. Um, but man, it is much changed. So we needed a fucking pro like Dave to come in because it's not daytime. It is nighttime. And I said last week that the moon is oppressively close. Like imagine in like sci-fi movies like when the moon is like crazy close it, oh just large and it's it's providing dim light for an otherwise very dark scene it is not hot like it was the first time can everybody see in dim light i i have cannot. dark vision what ethel has some some way of dealing with this i hope i have low remember. light vision but my pocket okay. can see in dim yeah light. i have look i have low light Low light, you can see in dim. Yeah, but I'll I have, you. Yes, I have, I have no way. Night. Although my familiar can, like Werner can, so I could pull him out of my tumor and. <laughs> you oh. um. Well, let me ask you. Direction. Let me ask you this, um, Aldo. Do you have? Do you? Have, didn't you have goggles once, or am I thinking of an old character? <laughs> I no, I I did have. That was uh, Nestor did. I also have goggles, but they're alchemists' goggles, so they don't provide that benefit. Okay, so it's dim light uh, for you, um, which is like DC5 flat check if you needed to do anything. Um, the rest of you, you can see. Uh, I'll describe it for you. You can see by the light of the moon. <laughs> and you see, uh, just like you saw the first time, this building, um, most of it like rubble. Uh, it has not been used in a long time, and it just opens straight way in uh, the first time you came here you went in and you you went into a door um, stage left your right uh, that I'll ping on the map um, big set of double doors you went through um, and then you just kind of made your way around to the back but you're, you're on this beautiful map now what do you, what do you want to do here Atticus will step forward I mean, he has dark vision, so he he could see beyond what's blacked out on this map. Yeah, give me a with an arrow how far you can see. With an arrow, how far I can see? Um, actually, I actually don't really know uh, the rules. Yeah, what's dark vision? And I can uh, see beyond the edge of the known world uh, of this map. I mean, apparently, yeah, you can see in bl no light at all. You can see sixty feet. Is that true in two E as well? Uh, I believe so. I'm assuming it's 60 feet because I—that's uh, what it was in one e. That's what he said. <clears throat> yeah, okay, exactly. so you see straight ahead, um, past two sets of double doors um, on the left and the right. Um, I'll use uh, left and right in terms of the map, just so we're all speaking the same language. But it would be your right um, is the doors you went in on, but it's map left here and then gotcha. there's another set here and then the straight ahead where you can see and, and all of you with dim light so except Aldo can see into the uh, courtyard you didn't really spend any time in the courtyard you just looped around the building um, until you were able to find stairs that led upstairs and that's where uh, that's where you found the yellow king the uh, core rulebook says a creature with dark vision or greater dark vision can see perfectly well in areas of darkness and dim light, though such vision is in black and white only. Some forms of magical darkness, such as fourth level darkness spell, block normal dark vision. A creature with greater dark vision, however, can see even those forms of magical darkness. It does not give a distance. I'm going to keep yeah. looking. Um, From I, a distance. I'm an idiot, and I, I thought we were at the bottom of the map looking up. That's why I was like, uh, it goes up to the border of the map. I don't know. I, I didn't realize we were going down. Oh. So, uh, but it's all good. Um, Atticus will begin walking forward. Okay, give me a perception check. Ethel. Yeah? Come up here and stand next to me. Don't make me go by myself. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, I was tra- I was describing the scene to Aldo. Well, we um, figured we'd just follow your lead. You've been here before. I, I am actually, before you do that, I, I am, Aldo is going to break out a vial of bottled <laughs> sunlight oh. and shake it like a glow tube. So that will give him 20 feet of bright light and 40 additional feet of, of uh, lower light. Um, well, I should, actually, yeah, that'll raise up the dim light one level. So that'll be... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, Ethel, if you step up with Atticus, give me a perception check as well. Uh, I got a 25 perception. Uh, uh, I got a 35 perception. Okay. As you approach the entryway into the caravanserai, you see on the right um, a small door that you never... Um, entered when you came in. You saw it, but you just went past it and went in those doors on the left. It's actually a half door. Um, The top half looks like it at one time had a curtain in front of it, but the curtain's been torn down. In fact, last time you were here, there was a curtain hanging there, but you see a curtain laying on the ground. Um, It's like one of those half doors that splits in the middle that's missing the upper half. Um, And there's nothing hanging from the lintel now. It looks like a small little guard station. And the lower half of the door is cracked. And as you approach, both of you distinctly hear this growl. This sound of like overlapping growls that are, you know, very dog-like, but also something uh, guttural and different. So it's just this like... And all of a sudden, the lower half of the door bursts open and you see these hounds emerge. Oh no. And they look like there's, there's emptiness where the eyes should be. And it looks like they're made of pure shadow. Tindalos. Tindalos. Roll for initiative. Dude, these things are no joke. They They are not. kill us. They kill people. Um, should I just roll over that that perception check to be my initiative? Is that how it should work, Troy? Is that uh, it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So you guys rolled really good perception. I think, Joe, you rolled a 25. 25. And uh, what did you have there, Ethel? Uh, it, for the purposes of uh, initiative, it's going to be a 37. Ah, you still get a little boost there. I um, little but boost. I like that, where you step forward and you use perception and you're getting right into a fight. Let's roll that uh, into your initiative. Um, so Aldo, Suki, and Eris, what did you roll? I got a 29. 29. I just had to do math in my head. <laughs> for Eris, we hope. <laughs> what about 29. you, Suki? None. Uh, I got a 32. 32 Ooh. for Suki do. And uh, Aldo. Uh, Aldo got a 23 for you and me. 23 (laughs) for you and me. Round one. Ethel, you've got the jump. Uh, This isn't like a perfect depiction of these hounds. Um, This is a a version of it if it wasn't made of like just pure shadow. Um, This is what you see. uh, This is kind of a... Uh, you got to use your imagination. That's not exactly what they look like. Okay. Um, I will do a double slice uh, on the hound directly in front of me. Um, I was reading somewhere recently. Someone mentioned about uh, your weapons having critical, something to do with critical. <laughs> and it might be something you're forgetting or not using. Critical specialization? Yeah. Matthew. Uh, I just for cheese sure sake. I want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck here. And I just thought about it now that I'm seeing you. I Hi, want buddy. you to get the most cheese on your Berg dog. Come yeah, on, dude. man. Listen to Joe. Oh, yeah. Look, with the, ha- with the hammer, the target would be knocked prone. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, I also, I made a mistake. Uh, I didn't make a mistake. I just, I just didn't have a. Cheated. No, it was the other way around. I nerfed myself. So, like, you can shove with the hammer. Like, I was sho- whenever I was shoving people, I was shoving with my hand. I actually can shove with the hammer itself. To cut. So, and just remember the shove has the attack trait, so it uses the map. 
does multiple attack. attack penalty. Um, I am going to double slice uh, the, uh, the hound directly in front of me. And just so I keep myself honest, the orange die is going to be my hatchet. The hounds of winner. Okay, for the warhammer, that is going to be a 33 to hit. That is a critical hit. Okay. Nice. Yes, dude. And, the hatchet, and the hatchet is going to be a uh, 36 to hit. Oh, uh, bad. So, so that's two criticals. Two criticals. So <laughs> double crit. <laughs> yeah, so there's double damage for both. Um, or was it a natural 20? We won't use the beloved fan criticals. Um, but you you did the same dog, right? Yes. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, let's do the Warhammer first. Ethel's back. Yeah, I don't yeah. care what anybody I'm says. I'm so glad that I was like, Ethel, what are you doing? Come up here with me. <laughs> Am I walking right. in here alone? The I'm Warhammer, paying you. The Warhammer will do 42 points of damage and knock the Hound prone. Oh, dear. But just Thanks before for, he hits the ground. Just before he hits the ground, I'll do my uh, hatchet <laughs> damage. Just whop, wallop him into the ground. Oh, that's no good. Uh, so that's... I rolled, rolled On 2d6, I rolled two ones. Oh. So that will be... Uh, 16 points of damage from the, from the hatchet. Oh, all right, 16 points of damage. Um, trying to find an image that looks pronish. Um, about this one. It's like he's fallen and he can't get up. He's prone. <laughs> uh, all right, so that was just your first action or first two actions? First two actions. Um, Hell however, above for first two. Um, this I'm gonna use for my third action. I'm gonna use my flensing strike ability. Is that a yes. Word? So yeah. you're gonna take one d8 persistent bleed damage per weapon damage dice of whichever weapons you use that had the most weapons damage dice. So I crit with. It's just gonna be that warhammer. So it's gonna be. Uh, well, you crit. You don't. It's just a, just a standard, right? Okay. So it's gonna be two d8 bleed. You're flat footed, <laughs> oh, and your resistances to any physical damage types are reduced by five until the beginning of my next turn. So my resistances are, all right, just remember at the uh, end of my turn, I got to take, what is it, 2d8 persistent? 2d8 persistent bleed. Bleed, if they bleed. If they bleed. If they bleed. Uh, resistances drop by five, flat-footed and prone. <laughs> Zoinks! Uh, okay, that was a, that was a, we haven't seen brutality strong, like that in a while. Strong opener, as they say. Um, okay. <laughs> Everybody watch out. They bite. I think. <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move to Suki's turn. Okay. Um, he I said was... that ominously. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. That's how I always say it. What the I... fudge was that? Now, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Curious choice of words there, we're, friend. We're pretty um, bottlenecked, and I was trying to find a way to move out of the space and get behind these hounds but I'm assuming any which way I go will provoke. Why? Because I'm gonna go within five feet of them. But why are you assuming they have an attack of opportunity? Because they have big jaws. Okay. Uh, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> Caution <laughs> to the wind. Uh, d Joe, you can't t say that and then make a face. No, I'm just saying that's the old, that's the old school knowledge check if they have <laughs> attacks of opportunity. Just go provoke, see if that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Take one for the team. Um, yeah, fuck it. I'll do I it. I know what so, it's like being a caster, Suki. It's like if you use that action for the knowledge check and then move, you can't cast a spell. So it's I know. Like, and also, if I do any ranged attacks from here, I can't shoot through Ethel or Atticus. You can. They just get a plus one to AC. That's all that, That's all they get. But, uh, so, yeah. It sucks. Um, it's just a plus one to AC. If it's a targeted spell. I mean, if it's a saving throw, you can do it. No, I was going to do it. You know what? I'll just, I'll use my first action to run past uh, the hounds. Okay. At that Oh, no, moment. you crossed in front of a John that you weren't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing seems to happen. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's not cool. That's He's sweat. in a weird mood right now. I'm Something weird is going on. Is Fuck Troy up. the John in yellow? Is, is Troy the John in yellow? Is Troy the John, Troy? John in yellow? Be honest, how are you really Rubens? <laughs> uh, it's a pre-existing condition. Uh, so I run, run past them. They don't seem to provoke, so that's great. Everything and seems totally fine. 
Yeah, everything oh, seems normal. Oh, I and hate him so much. Suki is gonna whoosh, produce flame and make a ranged uh, attack against the hound to the left in front of Atticus. That is okay. not prone. Yeah, you and Atticus had a moment a couple nights ago. Um, getting a little closer here. You're sharing in uh, each other's backstory, so you're maybe saving your buddy here. Uh, that's going to be 22, or no, 32 to hit. 32 to hit is a hit. Woo! Boys. So that's going to be 4d4 plus 3 fire damage. 4d4 oh. plus 3 fire. Double Zowie. Four, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15 plus 3, uh, 6, 18. 18. <laughs> okay. I already got it. <laughs> so it's 18 points of damage, and he, is he on fire? Or no, this is just, uh, boom, you're basically throwing fire at him. Uh, yeah, just fire damage. Uh, okay. On a critical, they take double damage, but yeah. yeah. The, great. The importance of that is if they were weak to fire, then they would take an extra uh, John on top of that three. So uh, 18 points of damage as far as you can see, uh, and you moved, and then two action produce flame. Yep. Beautiful. All right, so Suki gets up there, and now it's Eris's turn. Eris is about 10 feet behind Atticus uh, to his uh, left, looking at the map. All right. I'm not metagaming, I swear. Here we go. But like, <laughs> but we just says experienced- the metagamer. <laughs> <laughs> we just experienced this thing in that like uh, graveyard area where we thought that the main, like, thing we were gonna be doing was fighting those like red-footed spider pigs but then the statues came alive so she's remembering that and just being like i don't want to like these are just dogs i we i might need my powers yes. for later yes. yes um i was so, just thinking the same thing like so i'm gonna cast guidance on myself to give me a plus one status bonus um to like attack or whatever and then I'm gonna do telekinetic projectile, something on the ground, to hit the dog that Ethel hit. Love the harpoon. That is our harpoon anywhere? Uh, <laughs> oddly enough, in this desert way station, there's no harpoon. That actually, that would be the most like Douglas Adams things ever, if just everywhere she went, there were just harpoons lying yeah. around. That is. <laughs> That's so Douglas. You guys so don't Douglas. see harpoons everywhere? Yeah. I see them everywhere. Um, so what, you're just looking for an item to telekinetically uh, throw? Yeah. You see a, uh, a bucket that might be used to like water horses. Cool. I'm gonna try to whack him with the telekinetic projectile. Ooh, okay. It's a natural nine, so. Um, oh, so it's 26 altogether with my guidance to 26 hit. 26 with the guidance. And is this the one that is in front of uh, Atticus? The one in front of Ethel. Oh, the one in front of Ethel, of course. Why did I even ask? He's flat-footed. Uh, he's flat-footed. That is a hit. Awesome. Let's see. Two, four D6. Yeah, four D6 four, with a ten, bucket. Plus four. You know, a bucket falls on your head. And you feel some serious damage. You have to uh, tell it's, me. It's, it was a bucket half full of water, so it was 19 points of damage. 19. Urine. Urine. It was urine. It was, it was urine. urine. No. It was dream urine. It was dream <laughs> urine. <laughs> Drurin. Um, brutal. Okay, so just boom. This poor fucking dog is lying on the ground, flat footed, and you just <laughs> whoop boom. This bucket shatters on his head. Um, okay. Uh, is that your final action? That's all my actions. Okay, it is Atticus's turn. Atticus, you came up, you felt like these dogs, uh, these hounds were gonna get the jump on you, um, but you're able to act before them. Weird. Um, okay, in that case, uh, Atticus is going to do a similar thing to Eris. He's gonna, can he reach up to the wall? Just above, like toward the top of the wall and just pull like a loose brick off the top and drop it down on the prone dog in front of Ethel. See like uh, Luke trying to get his saber uh, with yes, the wampa. Exactly. It's like, shh. Sing comes out. Gah! Right down, yeah. Sheboygan. <laughs> uh, slam it down on that dog. Okay, uh, is this an attack roll, yeah? Yeah, 27 to hit. Yep, the poor thing. Uh, okay. Uh, that is going to be, whoo, that's a couple sixes, LaValle. It's a couple sixes. Is it 4d6 you're rolling? Yeah. It's just uh, like Eris. 
Just like Eris, yep. Uh, so that is 16 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, and then I'm going to cast shield and raise whoa, a magical shield in front of you. Okay, so a, a shield appears in front of you. Very cool. Okay. Does it seem to hurt the dog? Yeah, that's everything prone? you've okay. done to uh, to the dog has hurt. Um, it's just that uh, every enemy in Pathfinder 2nd Edition has 700 hit points. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were aware of that. Um, it's a little thing they added, um, hit points. A thousand uh, hit points per character. All right, and oddly enough, it is that hound's turn. So that hound is prone. It wants to get up, which will uh, provoke. Provoke. Because that is a move uh, that has the move trait on it. So uh, they'll provoke from Atticus. Probably doesn't have a weapon out there, so uh, Ethel, strike away. Uh, that will be a 26 to hit. That is a hit. Terrible roll is what it was, but I'm glad it hit. Let's see what we got here. Uh, that will be 15 points of damage. And the dog dies as it tries to <laughs> <Yeah>. stand up. <laughs> <laughs> the dog tries to stand up and Ethel just cr crushes its head. Yeah, it just crushes Aww. its skull. This, this is, this is this already skull. a lot more fun than that last encounter. Like a <laughs> lot is. more fun. And remember, they're not like dogs. Dogs, These right. Are, they're monstrous, evil, evil monstrous. creatures that or we only say dog right. because that's they didn't, the closest. They didn't walk out of a door like. <laughs> yeah, they're not, yeah. Like, do you have any water? Like that. That's not what happened. Just no. Google hounds of Tindalos. They're hounds yeah. of Tindalos. Like, yeah, here's some water. Whack. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you don't know what they are. They are these shadowy hounds. Um, but it is now Aldo's turn. Aldo would like to do a knowledge check on these things. Okay. Um, what kind of knowledge are you thinking here? Do you have a you have pretty strong occult, right? Uh, I do. Yeah. So if your galt, uh, if your galt, if your galt, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't talk about your galt. Who is John Galt? Uh, if your gut oh, is telling you, uh, you know, maybe how Tindalos, then roll a cult. Okay. That is a twenty-five. Okay, they are in fact not hounds of Tindalos. Oh. They are creatures known as. Yeeth hounds. Oh, oh dude, okay. these are in one e. Like, yeah, these, these are. Uh, you like, ran into these in Rise of the Rune Lords. Though. These are like <laughs> hunting dogs, and it appears that these are the shadow versions of normal Yeth hounds. So they are um, hunting dogs. Um, very, very evil. Um, usually uh, found in the company of either hags or hunters. Um, so you would think uh -oh. if there's uh, a group of yeth hounds here, their hunt master may not be far behind. Oh, oh my God! Is there an invisible hag? Like, oh God! There can only be on. one hag in this. Yeah, there's only going to be one area. hag. <laughs> mm -mm. Eris <laughs> is going to clean that shit up. <laughs> um, can I know if they have any? specific weaknesses, any kinds of damage. Yes. Um, with that roll, you would know that they are uh, a little bit weak to silver damage. All right. Break out the fancy cookware or uh, flatware. <laughs> Grandmother's in town. <laughs> Aldo's uh, such a weird dude. This whole party is so <laughs> like, weird. Everybody, what are you talking about? Every individual. <laughs> there is no about? one normal in this group. <laughs> oh, I wanted to say, too, uh, before, I, when we were getting ready, I, Aldo passed out two lesser uh, elixirs of life to everyone in the party. Oh, oh great. Cool. We each have you. two? Yes. Each of you nice. has two. Do they just... Like, do they have to be used within that day? Is that... Yeah, they have to be used before the next time that I use my... Prepare. The extract. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, dude. But, That's uh, amazing. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so he is going... He's going to just go ahead and throw an alchemist's fire at the Yeth Hound, the shadowy Yeth Hound. Right, which is that still is, on the edge of your uh, your light there before the light gets a little dimmer, so... Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. It's cracked. Oh, great. Natural one. Oh, uh, so that I, I, I was actually I was watching um, the how it's played YouTube guy this morning. Yeah, and 
he's he's great. He does he's great, he's awesome. Like, Rodney, very, very, Rodney, right? Yeah, yeah, he does, he's, yeah. He's great. He's awesome. And his suggestion for like out the, situations like this, like alchemical items, is either that it's just treated as a dud, it's no damage, because on a normal miss, like they would at least get splash damage. In this case, that doesn't happen. Or in certain situations, he would say, like if you're throwing alchemist fire, like something in its area would catch on fire. But uh, yeah, I would pro- in this situation I'd probably say it's probably a dud. But uh, it's up to you. I'll to try. Yeah, I would say if it was a uh, a critical fail that wasn't a natural one, I'd be like, dud. But unfortunately, people have paid for the privilege of these fumbles, and I, I've got to give them what they want. Okay. This is another crazy pull. I swear to you. Totally random. I haven't read it yet. But it's from JT in Gainesville, Florida. And, and the title of the fumble is, Sorry, Mr. Marr. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Hi, JT. Oh, no. And I'm sorry for what's going to happen to you in about a minute. Yeah. Where's he from? <laughs> Gainesville. Gainesville. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Skitty's from Gainesville. And he says, Sorry, Mr. Marr. When making your attack, your foot skids across the ground, causing you to miss your shot and pull a muscle in your leg. Roll a reflex save. Okay. And there's critical success, success, fail, critical fail. He's got cat-like reflexes. Uh, all right, I keep getting aggressively booted out of my character sheet's online <laughs> management software. <laughs> so let me log back in here. Uh, skin, you're the best. <laughs> that is a uh, 20. 20. All right, this is against the creature's AC, Troy. Okay, um, that is just a regular fail. Regular fail. Uh, your movement speed is reduced by half for 1d4 rounds. Right. So you slip and maybe twist your ankle a little bit, and your movement speed is reduced for a couple rounds. All right, okay. so that's not the worst Tim thing. Tim Tebow is a piece of shit. <laughs> shit. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right, so we'll say it. three rounds. As Thank honestly, you, JT. Thank, Thank you, JT. you Thanks for, for your support of the show. We greatly appreciate it. For all That's we know, he, JT may agree with you, Skid. He, he may, he may, in fact, not just because you live in Gainesville doesn't mean that you worship Tim Tebow like <laughs> everyone else seems to. Live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so first attack misses, and you you twist your ankle a little bit in that uh, toss. Okay, you didn't warm up enough. All right. Uh, okay. It's like I've got to remember to do my calf stretches before entering horrible realms. All right. I'm going to throw a second firebomb. That is a 19, which is a miss. miss. A miss, yeah. Uh, so he will take four points of splash damage. Okay. Great. Um... All right, so four points of splash damage, and then yeah, you did the the knowledge check. All right, so Aldo gets yeah. a little uh, a little twist in his ankle there, but for Aldo, you want to keep your distance anyways as the range guy, so it's probably the not the worst thing that could happen. Um, and it only lingers for 18 seconds. All right, it is oddly enough that hound's turn, and that hound is going to do something, do something that takes three actions. Oh, no. He's running back. He's going to run back to the hunt master. <laughs> no. He's, he's, he's it, takes, it takes three actions to withdraw? Is that the rule in <laughs> Tui? It takes it, three actions to just surrender? <laughs> it emits an unearthly oh, howl. Yeah. Oh, yes. I remember this now. Okay. Just like, yeah. oh. And I mean, people from uh, hundreds of feet away uh, could hear this. Everyone roll a will save. So psyched oh, to have my magic shield up. <sighs> what a waste of everything all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh, all right, let's Zoic give it. To, scoop. Give it to me straight, Suki. Nat 20. Critical nice. 35. success. Okay. Nice. You uh, badass you. Very good. Critical success. Uh, all right. So you, the, you know, whether it succeeds or fails. All right. So great. Um, what about Eris? Got a 30. Bam. Oh, nice. Got a natural 16. Regular success. 
Uh, Atticus. 24. That is a regular success. Oh, it had to be a tween zony. Okay. It had to. I feel better. I feel better. <laughs> Not much better, but a little better. Aldo? Uh, Aldo got a 30. Uh, 30, regular well. success. And I saved Matthew for the end. What did you get? 20. That is a regular failure. Oh. Okay. It's a, it's just regular a regular fail. fail. Regular. Fail. Okay. Regular. Um, let's just see. All right. You are frightened one. Okay. Okay. There, there are worse things. Yeah. And whether you succeeded or failed, uh, you are immune to that power from all the other, uh, for all the other dog had, uh, well, there's more dogs coming out. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. for all Oops. the other dogs about to come. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's actually their turn. So uh, I let the cat out of the bag seconds before the cats came out. Because at the that moment. that are dogs. Uh, of yes, the bag. At that okay. moment, uh, a couple things happen. Oh, oh, Suki, you're so Suki. dead. I'm so fucked. You're a, so incredibly dead. One runs right past up to Suki, God. and another one comes out at Suki. Oh. oh, no. And then standing behind them, a figure emerges. Uh huh. Are you kidding me? And the figure looks like this. Oh, no. Wait, that's what we saw Wait. before. Yeah, we've yeah. met this guy. Very, very similar looking creature. They all kind of look similar, dressed in these tattered robes, clutching a red ruby. Like denizens of Lang to me. That's what they look like, don't they? Uh, oh, no. They have a veil covering their face, a turban with an arrow, like a sort of golden arrow sticking out of it, the bejeweled um, thing on their midriff, and just like, yeah, tatters coming from all their robes. It steps out as well. Um, they're all acting, so I just had them all take their first action for dramatic effect, but now I will finish their action. So, Suki, one of the, the first one came up to you, and with its second action, it will attempt to bite you. That's unfortunate. Uh, and only rolled an 18, so that's a miss. And then with its third action, it will also try another bite and a 16, so it missed. The second hound does the same thing, two bites. First, oh man, 23? Miss. Miss, okay. And then with its second and final action, it tries another bite, misses with a 19. I mean, I rolled yeah. four oh. rolls <laughs> under 10. Goodness. However, the denizen of Lang steps out, first action. And you see he's holding in his hand uh, a scimitar. And as he's holding it there, he's kind of like balancing in his hand, like testing the weight of it. So fucking cool. God damn it. Like it's a weapon maybe he hasn't used before. <laughs> and he is going to... This is a good sword. <laughs> he's going to cast a spell. He's going to cast a spell on uh, Atticus. Don't. God damn it. What? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Give me Just cast it on Matthew. He He's the most powerful character and never gets angry about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a will save. He knows your magic. Atticus is going toe to toe with this guy. His head dips down. Eyes lock. He said he was only going to do this if he knew he could steal his mind against these powers. Let's dance, motherfucker. <laughs> 29. 29 is a regular success. Yes. Um, all right. So he cast Phantom Pain on you. Oh, Ooh. dude, that is a badass spell. Yeah. So Illusory Pain racks the target, dealing 2d4 mental and 1d4 persistent mental damage. Um, so on a success, you take full initial damage, but no persistent, and the spell ends immediately. So you're going to take 2d4 damage. Not bad at all. Not, Not bad at all. Uh, it gets a lot worse once you get into failure. You're only going to take two, four points of mental damage. So he just like... like <laughs> and he's fighting against it, but it still damages him. And now it is round two, and it is Ethel's turn. Uh, Ethel is going to slide up to this uh, denizen of Lang, and I'm gonna do a double slice. Ooh, yeah. you're just walking right past that other hound and yet sliding right up to him, good. Okay, uh, and to keep me honest, orange is the hatch. Crack die in the orange, okay. 
Uh, so that is going to be a 36 on the Warhammer and a 26 on the Hatchet. Okay, the Warhammer regular hit, uh, Hatchet miss. Wow, okay. Regular hit. Here we go. Uh, that will be th- uh, 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage. Juice. That's good. And that is my turn. Okay, you. I mean, you look, you're a weapons, you're a weapons guy, right? You look down at that weapon. There is something special about that scimitar. Oh, <laughs> get it, dude. But will it only exist in the dreamlands? Interesting question. Stay tuned after the break. Yes. It will only exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, been, that's been the way. Uh, and now stay tuned after this break. <laughs> <I knew it. laughs> Suki, you're up. You were very bold in going up there, and there's nothing wrong with that boldness, but now you are surrounded by these dogs that couldn't couldn't hit you if they tried. These hounds. Yeah. Uh, Suki is going to um, whisper her command, and Pepsi is going to come out of her sleeve <laughs> as she lowers Pepsi to the ground. Uh, y'all forgot about Pepsi, didn't I you? Did. No, I did. I'm Pepsi. just waiting for the arrow. Back. That's going to shoot Pepsi into New the Pepsi. encounter. <laughs> uh, and Pepsi is going to slither up to... Ooh, Pepsi's looking great. A little corn yeah. snake action Dude, today. Dude, that is I a way better it. Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Pepsi changes colors. Uh, Pepsi is going to slither... Up. There he is. Uh, going to slither up to this citizen of uh, Lang. Denizen of Lang. <laughs> citizen, of Lang. Votes. citizen of he Lang. He votes in Lang. Hey, look, well met, citizen of Lang. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm well a denizen met. of oh, Lang. Oh, fuck, I got Lang jury duty. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, <laughs> that's the nice ones. The evil ones are the denizens, and the citizens are just like normal, normal folks. Just going about their, their lawns. Lives. Rubbing their rubies. <laughs> really, you want the civil jury duty for when you're when you're a citizen. Oh yeah, you, you don't do want not want to go to criminal <laughs> criminal court. Uh, so I can have Pepsi act now, um, uh, and she commands Pepsi to attack twice. So Pepsi okay. is going to attack twice. Great, and you have control of Pepsi now if you need to move. Him. Thank you. Uh, oh brother. Yep. Uh, just to needle you on the rules. Uh, does Pepsi, is it just flavor? Can Pepsi show up wherever? Or does Pepsi need to use a move action to get there and can only attack once? Oh, you're right. Well... So Pepsi only gets two actions if they're like an animal companion. But if I let... My imagination was I let Pepsi out in the square diagonal to where Suki is. Um, but that's still a move. Oh, you mean here? Oh, I suppose... Oh. Yeah. Then would, that's not a move. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Oh, Didn't okay. see that angle. Yeah. Yep. You could if you can, I would assume you can put that put the animal adjacent to you. You're not like summoning a creature where you can put it anywhere. But I would imagine you can put it adjacent to you. I I haven't read enough. I, into I would Im- I would imagine. I wouldn't think. Is it like, an animal companion or? It's an animal companion, but it has the minion trait. It does like what I tell it to do. Okay. Um, but it is an animal companion. I'll have to look this up because so it's- should it, I mean, w- w- and I'm fine with this all, but was that partially like just flavor that like it resides in your robes and you just like put it down wherever you want? Or does it kind of <laughs> always just need to be slithering around beside you? Like- it slithers out from my robe. That's the flavor text, but it has to move. But I imagined I put it like, you know, in front of me, which would be the five foot space. Yeah, but- that would be a move action. Okay, so then it would from be from your space to there. Yeah. Joe, I feel like you've had the most animal companions. When you have like a dog, it starts in your space, correct? No. 
Oh, it, ha- it, it, it occupies its own square, but like usually when we go into these things, you never have Pepsi out ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. And I Pepsi feel like that's out, a cool a character choice, but I don't think mechanically that like exists in the game. I think it, it's supposed to be holding a square at all times. So you could say it held that square, but then none of those enemies were able to attack it before, which is kind yeah. of odd. I'm okay. fine with it being on your person. It's just to move off of it. It's a move action. Fair enough. So yeah. it is a move action for Pepsi, and Pepsi will attack once, and Pepsi missed. It's going to uh, keep Pepsi alive, so rolled a 22. 22, all right, so Pepsi does miss the Citizen of Lang. And then... <laughs> and now I have Did the title of the episode. Citizen <laughs> Lang. Citizen <laughs> of Lang. Thank you, Sydney. No, just Citizen Lang. Citizen <laughs> Lang. Citizen Lang. Lang. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Never gonna Thank live in Rosebud. Rosebud. <laughs> Rosebud. People looking back will be like... That's the name of the Yeth Hound in the front. Yeah. Yeah, How to like, everyone who knew him? I uh, knew him well. Was Citizen Lang the name of the hound? I just don't remember. It seemed important at the time. Uh, with the last two actions that Suki has, I'm going to cast a uh, electric arc at the two hounds in front of me. Nice. So, where's my d20? Little electric. Uh, it's just, oh, it's, that, a, it's, it's just, just a, a reflex throw. save. Yeah. Okay, the two, and they the two do not attack you. Hounds. So you assume they don't have uh, an attack of opportunity. So uh, the one uh, to the north of you rolls a 26, that and the passed. one to the right of you rolls a 29. Well, dang, that was a waste. That's not a waste. They, they still take half damage. They take half damage. But the it's 29 was it critical success? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. I had to ask. <laughs> All right, so they take half half dumb zoning. Uh, half dumb zoning. So 10 total, so five each. Five each. Hey, you know what? It's better than four. Yeah. Um, Okay, so interesting little map here. So wildly different from our combat two episodes ago. That bottleneck is very, very interesting. Um, All right, let's see what happens here. It is uh, Eris's turn. Okay, so I want to know... If, if he this really loves me, I want denizen to of whatever the hell. <laughs> Call them what they're supposed to be called. Citizen Lang. Lang. <laughs> denizen of beef. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, I want to do a knowledge roll. I want to know if it's like uh, immune to stuff because mm. like, you know, it seems to be doing the same sort of spells that I'm doing. And yeah. I just want to know if I'm going to waste my time on it or not. I like it. It's um, so like a cult? Or? Yeah, a cult would be perfect for this. Natural <laughs> too. Oh, <laughs> nothing's <laughs> worse than failing knowledge checks. Uh, they are weak to <clears throat> damage. <laughs> okay. I let everyone know that. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> We're having a good time. <laughs> um... Let me see. Okay, yeah. I'm going to cast haste on Ethel. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Yes! I cast you know haste. Because you know what uh, Ethel likes to do more than anything else. What? Strike and stride. Oh, hell yeah. So I, I reach stride, out baby. my hand. I cast Nobody haste, and I'm like, does they're, they're, it damage them. Damage does the trick. So Great. haste is ranged and is single target in 2E. It's just like it you says can, range 30 feet. Yeah, so, target and you, you one just creature. give it one creature. It's totally, di- I guess, because one it was so it's probably powerful. Haste, yeah. Yeah, if I heightened. heighten to seventh level, which I was just looking at, but I don't understand heightened, um, I can target up to six creatures. I can explain oh, yeah, that to you at some point. It is complicated as fuck. Yeah. It's actually not that complicated, but like. It, it it's it's not easy. What level is it? It's like, I thought it's, it just takes your spell slot when you heighten it. I thought you just heighten it to the spell slot you have and it just occupies that. Yes, spell but slot. there's heightened plus one, there's heightened plus two, and then there's like or, or I guess there's heightened plus one, but then there's heightened seven, heightened three, heightened yeah. five. Like yeah. um and then yeah, it's So you can't cast that yet? You're not no, we're not casting seventh level spells. I mean, that's like end game kind of stuff. I think that is like that is a major change in philosophy, though. To like turn haste from a spell that does what it at a, as a third level spell into something that you would need a seventh level spell slot for. Yes, so that is a major rethinking of how haste works. Yeah, my assumption is that they looked at the at one E and were just like, it is so unbelievably powerful. Like that's it, it really oh, is. I mean, I mean, I think of like Endgame yeah. of Giant Slayer. Like whenever that, that came it. out, it was like, all right, well, 
Yeah, it's like anytime you're round. using a third level spell, like, like spamming it, like <laughs> at, at, in the end game, it's it's probably yeah, yeah. Um, All right, so you're gonna cast haste on Ethel. You did your knowledge check. You have one more, John. No, no haste, haste is probably is, two. Oh, haste is two. Haste okay. is two. Yeah. Great. Um, but it is Atticus's turn. You guys are all getting this opportunity before it comes back to the uh, enemies. Yeah, I think Atticus. Uh, remember, it was only seconds ago that this guy went in at him with his phantom pain, Ugh. and Atticus gah, shook it off. And Atticus is not even going to hesitate, and he's just going to and go right back at him, illusionist okay. to illusionist, and he's going to cast Phantasmal Killer on oh. this guy. Oh. Yes. So, is he? Yeah. I don't know what denizens of Lang uh, fear, mm-hmm. but it would be. Whatever he did this to he the other guy, most. the captain on the boat. Yeah. Um, okay. So he's going to come right back at him and, and open the arsenal on this guy. So. All right. What do I need to roll to begin with? Will save uh, or fortitude? You need to roll uh, a will save. All right. I think I'm going to pass it this time. I'm Probably. feeling good about this. Uh, ooh, 26. 26 is a pass. Okay. Uh, and I love the 2E Phantasmal Killer. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, okay, so terrible damage. Uh, you take nine points of mental damage, okay. and he is frightened one. Frightened one. I rolled super low, uh, but yeah, he is frightened one. Okay. Uh, and yeah, can you describe what he sees at all? Uh, it would only be to his mind. Uh, what do these things fear? He sees... Um one of his dogs having its skull crushed by a man. Oh, by a divorced That's man. Weird. That's good. It's weird. He loves these dogs. He has a love of these dogs. Yeah, and uh, these hounds. And like his greatest fear is that a a man would just crush one of their skulls. Yeah, so that's what he sees. He's like, no, uh, the bugle. <laughs> that yeth hound's name. Was Bugle? <laughs> mm-hmm. No, Bugle. You make a mockery of this system. <laughs> what was the What was the uh, the the brewer in uh, in Skiergard? He had a um, Murple. It was Murple, Murple the fox? Yeah. Oh, and Murple was, was out of the right. book. <laughs> yeah, Murple the fox. Right out of the book. Yeah. Uh, Murple, and then Murple the Attic- emo fox. Yeah. <laughs> Atticus' last action will again raise a shield. Okay. And uh, just looking at Frightened here, Frightened 1, I take a status penalty for all my checks and DCs. And DCs. <laughs> Very Less important. Specified otherwise, uh, that value decreases. So this can be for one round, uh, and checks, attacks are considered checks, we uh, determined in the past. So, maybe da ba boo It is yeah, so now. So if he casts a spell, the DC of that save is lowered by one for this round. It would have been uh, the... Frightened the, goes down each round, right? Yeah. At the end so of your would, turn. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, so I basically. actually... I was not frightened during my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Which might have affected my, my second attack. It is Aldo's turn, because Yethon number two is dead. Bugle. Uh, <laughs> Paul. Bugle. I raised him when he was just a shadow Yeth pup. Aldo is going to step to Eris's right to get a, a little bit cleaner line of sight. And far in the hall, he's going to toss a, an alchemist fire at the get down there. Yep, nice clean Another shot. motherfucking natural one. Oh, oh no. no. Come on. Stop it. Come on. Stop it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> you, got a, you got a fumble from Tallahassee this time? <laughs> Or Jacksonville, the city Jacksonville. that Joe and I always let fall <laughs> in uh, when we played Pandemic. Oh boy. Um, oh, Jeepers Crow. Okay. Uh, this one from Jenny in Somerville, Massachusetts. Oh, so, Hi, I know Somerville. Oh, Somerville, I know Mass. Somerville. My cousin's from Somerville. Uh, I, got, I, I got cousins in Somerville. I really I got cousins. My cousin Pat is in Somerville. Uh, this one's called, oh, this is funny. I don't like sand. Dude, these are like getting oddly appropriate. 
Wow. Creepily yeah. appropriate. It's coarse, rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. It gets everywhere. <laughs> Somehow, it has gotten into your eyes during oh, this no. throw. Okay. All enemies, so it gets into your eyes, and, it, and you're like, ah, and you, all enemies ha- are concealed from you for 1d6 rounds. You may spend a round to blink or rub the sand out of your eyes to remove the condition. Oh. So concealment is a DC5 flat check. <laughs> For all attacks, so you could take the flat check or spend a round rubbing your eyes clear. A, a, a three action round. Three action round. Right. Probably take the DC5 flat check. I I'll just take. Okay. Yeah. That, I, I, it's, I, can't, I don't have the option to do it now, so I'm going to do. I'm going to try. It's like, ah! This horrible dream sand got into my face. <laughs> In my eyeballs! <laughs> I am going to try to throw another... I'm going to throw an acid flask this time. Attempt to throw an acid flask. Got a 12 on the flat check. Okay. Uh, Natural 17 on the attack. That is a 26. That is a hit. Awesome. Uh, Okay, that is 12 points of acid damage. Okay. And they will now have persistence acid damage on them. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, who is this? Is this the main dude or the... the uh, no, the, the Yeth, uh, Yeth Hound. In front of Atticus? Made. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Can you just roll a d6 okay. for those rounds on the eyeball stuff? Uh, four. Four rounds. Four okay. rounds, okay. And what did you have three rounds of? The... Uh, Oh, the, the, the ha- bum leg. Movement of half speed. Right, which right. Should, shouldn't affect. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be an issue. Okay, now... I'm in a, guys, I'm in a rough shape. <laughs> Seriously, you're like <laughs> limping. There's sand in your eyes. The type of yeah. guy is like, I hate the beach. <laughs> my <laughs> on the beach. My legs are hurting. I got sand in my eyes. You stepped on a broken shell. Yeah. Uh, it's just like you're bleeding. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. It is that hound's turn. Uh, he is standing right uh, next to Atticus. So he is going to go after Atticus. Um, I'm going to go for a bite. I haven't hit with the bite yet, and I think I'm due. Ugh, 25. Misses because of the shield. Oh. Bam! On the magic shield. The one point. A oh, one point. Okay. Yes! All right, then I will uh, I will take another. Yes! I'm going to take another bite chance here. Nat 2. Yes! Nice. Just yeah, to be so, clear, I owed you Valley because your save on Phantasmal Killer was on the nose. It was the exact save. So I was due. Okay. Um, I actually, I am going to, I'm going to, where is Ethel? Oh, Ethel's standing right there. I'm right here. Body out of the way. <laughs> right, so you're right there. So if I try to move, it's going to provoke. Um, I forgot you were even there. There was that body over you. Um, so, with my final action, my final action, I'm just going to take another, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll try to aid. I'm going to try to aid uh, the hound that's to the north of Suki. Um, so that when he attacks, like, I'll kind of call out, kind of bark, so that Suki turns and t- maybe leaves a part of her body vulnerable. Um, for this dog to attack. And so this hound is going to attack, which will trigger this aid. V- very low chance of uh, doing it. Um, when you got, can you, when you aid with an attack, are you rolling an attack roll or you're rolling a skill Usually check? Usually it's a skill check. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so for this, I'm, I'm like performance. Um, no, I'm trying. I, I'll, uh, it's I'll DC this. 20 usually, right? Is yes, right? DC 20. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to use survival actually for this. It's like a, I will say it's a survival tactic because that's not far off. Uh, and I actually made it with a 21. Uh, so that's going to be a plus one or a plus two to hit. It's a plus one. Plus um, one, I believe. A crit yeah. success is a plus two. Okay, great. All right, so it's going to try to bite you with a plus one. And I think I got you with a 28. Yeah, you got me. All right. Damn. Here's the, here's the thing. A couple things are going to happen. Uh, oh, no. First, you're going to take some damage to the tune of 11 points of piercing. Okay. And then you're going to take one point of evil. So 12 points of Ooh. damage all together. Um, what, what does evil damage feel like? 
Uh, it feels terrible. Like a sting after the bite? It's I'm like, like ooh, oh. that would hurt more. <laughs> what the hell is in that? Um, it just feels dark. Like, yeah. you know, like, you just, like get feelings of, it's like, there's like sadness and depression. I did not yeah. like it. All right, I could do something else. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, um, now give me a will save. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be a 27. All right, that's a regular success. Um, uh, are you a good, are you good? Are you good? Uh, yes, I'm good. I, go. I think I'm, <clears throat> what are is my- Are you Suki's alignment? That's a great question. What is Suki's alignment? Let me go to my profile real quick. Also, while you're looking that up, Troy, would you do me a favor? Would you I mind just calling it a success? It's just a success. It makes me feel bad. I mean, there's a critical success. When you say yeah. regular. I keep saying regular success. It just runs it down. I know, I know. But I, it makes it feel like less than. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> you're so <laughs> regular. Suki is, is uh, it's Suki's a plain actually, old success. <laughs> Suki's neutral. Oh, I bet she is. Did you just fill that in? No, look at my sheet that I sent you months ago. Don't you dare. She's actually a chaotic evil. <laughs> She's very, what are these sounds? Lawful oh. evil? That's what she is. She's yeah, oh, very you lawful. You take the evil damage. You're like, ah. Uh, she is neutral. Good. I do remember that. Because she's kind of she's kind of spunky. <laughs> it's right. from my time in Hell's army. Uh, I'm lawful evil. <laughs> All right, then Did it's I gonna... not tell you about my backstory? <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. It goes to bite again, and it hits with a 30. That's not oh. a crit, though, right? Not a crit. All right, let's talk damage, though. Let's see if I can roll better damage this time. Yep, I did. Uh, that's going to be 17 points of piercing, four points of evil, so 21 Ooh. points of damage. Okay. Uh, on that second bite. Um, Me. And no joke. It? Okay, and then it's going to do something very cool. It, like, goes to move, and as it goes to move, it, like, flies up in the air and air walks over to uh, behind Ethel. So oh, basically shit. flanking, and now it's sur now Ethel is surrounded by two hounds and a denizen of Lang. Now, here's the thing. So got another uh, hound down here that is going to also bite Suki. Come on, hit, hit, hit. Ah! All right, that is gonna be, fucking shit, a 26 to hit? That, that hits. Amazing. All right, so now I'm gonna try something a little bit different. First, you're gonna take some, oh, almost maximum damage across the board. You're gonna take uh, 22 points of piercing. And I'm gonna five, die. Five points of evil. So tw uh, 27 points me? altogether of damage, okay? Uh, and then it's going to attempt to knock knock you down with the bite. The bite has the knockdown trait, which is two actions, which is going to be an athletics check uh, to basically trip you. Um, against my, or is it? If it hits and deals damage, you can attempt an athletics check to trip the creature. I think it's against your fortitude DC, right? I think trip is reflex, but let me just check. Athletics that would DC. Make, athletics DC. Athletics. So athletics right? check against your athletics DC. It might be a, against your fortitude DC. What is my no, athletics? it's reflex DC. Yeah, yeah it's your reflex. Shove is against your fortitude DC. Is my DC, reflex DC like? Reflex 10. plus 10. Reflex plus 10, that's what, okay. All right, so I'm gonna take, uh, just to do something fun here, I'm gonna try it out. Uh, it's a 20. That's a miss. Oh, yeah, that's a miss, all right, so it does not knock you down. Um, and Don't that's... knock me down. <laughs> Don't knock, Don't me, knock down. me down. The denizen of Lang, now seeing Ethel surrounded, looks down at that sweet blade and uh, wants to give it a swing, and it swings directly at Ethel. Ethel, you are flat-footed um, right now as you are flanked. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, that's a 32 to hit. That's a hit. A couple things are going to happen. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Just, you're going to just take some damage. Just take some damage? <laughs> you're just going to take a lot of damage. Uh, you take, a couple things are going to happen. You take one hit point of damage, and then you'll take some more hit points of damage. Take 15 points of damage. Okay. okay. I'm gonna 15 swing things are going to happen. I'm going to yeah, take, take one point of damage. Take two points. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to swing again. Okay. Uh, 24 to hit. That misses. Okay. And I'm also going to swing again. I have my reason for that. Uh, what I say? 24? 24. 24. What a 25 of hit? 
Uh, yes, it would have because I'm flat footed. Okay, let me just see. Um, forceful. Why did is... I answer that question? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing, Troy? <laughs> All right, forceful is just a bonus to damage, and I think sweep is only if I attack a second person. Let me just make sure. Uh, when you attack, this way you get a plus one. Yeah, different target. Okay, just making sure. So that wasn't it. I'm going to attack again. Probably going to miss. Uh, 22. Yeah, so miss. Um, first one hits, doesn't do too much damage. Um, and then it just keeps swinging at you. And now is the top of round three. Big round for Ethel here. Okay, double slice on the guy. He Come made a on. fatal error. Not uh, not moving, because I am now quickened, so I can There we go. Shit. Holy shit. Mess this yeah. dude up. All right, let me get myself in focus. You go. Now. Pugles okay. murderer uh, turns his attention on me. All right, that is a uh, 33 on the hatchet and a 30. Uh, mm -hmm, math is hard. A 35 on the warhammer. Two mundane successes. Mundane. <laughs> <laughs> Two run-of-the-mill successes. <laughs> okay, 18 points of damage on the Warhammer. And that'll be... 15... Uh, yeah, 15 points of damage from the hatchet. Okay. I should mention, at the end of... Uh, after he attacked you, you could see, like, his wounds starting to close up. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a good thing, because I'm going to use a little thing called... Uh, a little called called cleansing, sl cleansing Slice. Ooh, Flints. So, yeah, so you're going to take... You are now flat-footed until the beginning of my next turn. You, any resistances, any physical physical damage are reduced by five, and you take 2d8 persistent bleed damage. Amazing. I if he bleeds. Suck. If he bleeds. Okay, I removed the frightened condition now that your turn is over. Um, is your turn over? No. I'm quickened. I got I got an extra action. I'm not putting it. Uh, so that's gonna be the most helpful here. Damn it. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm gonna. You, your AC is pretty high, so I'm gonna see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to demoralize you, uh, and I'm gonna just. I'm gonna. What do you say? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna cave your head in the way I caved your dog's head in. Oh, oh. Ooh, low blow. Low he blow. Says, what did you say? Uh, it's probably not going to do much because I rolled natural eight. Uh, it's a 21 intimidation. Um, he laughs at you. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> wow. He Our says. witty repartee will go down in the annals of history in the dreamlands. <laughs> Get out of here with that, he says. Uh, that is my turn. Good turn. Good turn. Just laid out some serious damn zoning. Um, but now it's Suki's turn. Okay, Suki is going to use an action to drink one of the elixirs of uh, lesser, uh, elixir of life lesser. And Sorry. I already rolled it because I knew I was going to do that. That's 20 points, uh, 20 hit points back, temporary yeah. hit points for 10 minutes. Thank Give you. for Aldo. Yeah, she says, thank you, Aldo. She's oh. not doing well. She's like, oh, thank you. Blood is gurgling. <laughs> yes, <a> bit. <laughs> like blood like spurts out of her mouth <laughs> and she tries to talk. Uh, and then, <laughs> God, I want to use my cool spells, but I know we have to save them. Um, she is going to do acid splash on the hound directly in front of her that tried mm. to bite her, but missed because it's stupid. Mm. <laughs> and she says that also out loud. Uh, and that's going to be... Uh, wait, can I do this if it's ranged and it's that close to me? Yeah, what spell are you thinking? Acid it's Splash? Acid Splash, but it's only giving, there's no like melee, it's it's range, but That's I don't want to. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. If, I didn't if, take if like he had a, an attack of opportunity, it would provoke. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's 27 to hit. 27 to hit. My little poopy is a hit. <laughs> is this dog's name Poopy? Poopy, the puppy. <laughs> so, what was the other, what was the other one? Bugle, Bugle and Poopy. Bugle poopy. and Poopy. <laughs> yep, this so, is Poopy. Dude. <laughs> Does this this is uh this Dennis Lang happen to have a toddler son? <laughs> it's Boogle. That's... Poopy. Oh, Mar the... Marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. T. Uh that's eight points of acid damage, and then it does say plus two persistent acid. Okay. 
So, so that will be on the end of his turn. And then it also says plus one splash would uh, uh, would mean Denison get hit by that low plus one? Uh, it would take one splash, and you and Pepsi would take one splash, I believe, right? Yes. Ah. You don't you don't have Aldo's ability to exclude your friends. Ah, okay. Uh, so you, I mean, that's the one of the drawbacks of doing range so close. Uh, you'll take a point. Pepsi will take a point, and I believe the enemy takes a the point. The target well. also takes a point. Yeah. Ah, okay. So one more to the target as well, and then we all take our little. Awesome. Um, and that's fun. It. That's my okay. round. That's your round. Good round. It's Eris's turn. Yo, what's up? <laughs> um, so I'm going to cast guidance on myself, asking the Babiaga, like, I know I've been asking a lot from you today, but like, you know. Um, so yeah, cast that on myself and I get a plus one to something. And then I'm gonna try to cast Impending Doom on the Denizen of Lang. Um, so that means it makes a will save. It makes a will save. Okay, now, this has the incapacitation trait. This is one thing we yes. keep forgetting. So let me just look at my the level of my John. What level are you guys? Uh, eight. eight. Eight, okay. And so, uh, incapacitation. Ability with this trait can take a character completely out of fighting and kill him. It's harder even on a, more, on a more powerful character. If a spell has the incapacitation trait, any creature of more than twice the spell's level Treats the result of their check, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Impending Doom is level three, and it is mm-hmm. more than twice the level. So uh, the cast, uh, my success will always be one step higher. So now I will roll this. Okay. You said will, right? Yep. Okay, so I rolled a 27. <sighs> yeah, the, D- the DC is 26. So that'd be it's a very critical frustrating. success. Critical success. Nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing. The creature is unaffected. Yeah. Cool. And this is what we're realizing. Is this such a powerful spell? It should rarely work against great. Uh, against bosses, basically. Against bosses. Or, or strong enemies. Like strong you, use enemies. It on, you use it on a hound, and it might just poof, down them, basically. But it's cool. I'm glad we learned that. That was two actions. Did you do something else? Yeah, I casted Guidance beforehand. Guidance. Um, but doesn't apply to, like, counteracting your will save, so... Yubba dubba do. It's Atticus's turn. Uh, man, this guy is throwing me for a loop zony. Um, They're tough characters. They yeah. march their own beat. Kind of hard to hit. Uh, can I do um? Have we already come across a bunch of citizens of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was honest. Got it. Got you. Fuck. So the first one you fought was in the crypt beneath Iris Hill. Right. Remember? You fought um, them and I just don't uh, remember the extent of our knowledge checks. Do you? I mean, do you think that we know what we're what we're up against? Like yeah, basically you, you've spent time now because you've you fought them uh you fought one there, you fought one was the captain of the boat, and I think you may have fought another one as well. So I imagine you've spent some time learning about them. You know they can cast spells, occult spells. Are uh, they you, living? You also know when they die uh, on this plane, they rematerialize in Lang. So does that mean they're undead? Um, no. Are they alive? They are aberrations. They're aberrations. They're dreams. So they are living. <laughs> they're living dreams. Living dreams. Are you um, living your dreams? Okay, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll risk it. I, I, I feel like Put it's the not- the biscuit? I feel like it's not undead. Uh, do I do I know that it has any particular resistance to like negative damage, like an undead would? Like, uh, no, skid rolled pr- pretty well. Um, if you'd like to use an action to roll, I can give you more information. I'm not going to give you the stuff for free, but you know that they uh, actually skid didn't roll on them. You that was on the dog, so yeah, you don't know shit. Well, you said roll? we know them. We fought them multiple times. We did all the research. Are you backtracking now? Um, well, I don't want to give you too much for free. I'm just trying to remember what you learned it's not free. before. We've seen, yeah. You know that, I think you know that they're immune to cold. And I think you know they have resistance to critical hits. Okay. Um, okay. And precision damage. 
Okay. Um, in that case, Atticus is going to hold his ground. He's going to change his tack from the illusion school uh, to uh, something darker, perhaps a necromantic school. Uh, and he's going to try to drain the life force out of this creature, and he will cast Enervation at it. Ooh. So we're going to switch to a Fortitude save and see if that's lower than your will save. Enervation. Enervation. All right, a little necromantic John. So you said Fortitude? Fortitude. Is it lower than his will save bonus? I'm just curious. Uh, sure. Sure. It's still what very high. Jack. All right, crack down. I got too many dice in my tray here. Uh, oh, that's a fail. Uh, Ooh. With a 22. That is a fail. Okay. Uh, Shit. You are drained one. Nice. If he's subject to this kind of damage, Atticus looks across at him when the illusion doesn't really take for the phantasmal killer. He's like, oh, not the mind, I see. Let's go to the body. And he starts drawing the life force out of this aberration. Sent you back from whence you came. Perhaps you will rise again, but it won't be here. And he is going to, uh, yeah, you are drained one. Uh, and you recall drained, Troy? Or, or yeah, I lose, I lose my hit points equal to my level. Level. Um, and max hit points are reduced by the same amount, which yeah. wouldn't really uh, matter. Um, and you have 4d8 persistent negative damage. Sheepers. Oh, oh, wow. wow. So it doesn't tick right? until your turn, but Heck yeah. it's going to be bad. So, you, so you're going to have 68 persistent damage this, this turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they're from two sources, so they will stack. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. Bleed uh, and negative. So he's like literally bleeding you out, and I am sucking your life force out of you. And then third action, I will raise a shield. So he's flat-footed, he's drained, and he's enervated. Um, holy shit, okay. I'll just put it like that. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, um, horrible, absolutely horrible. And now it's Aldo's turn. Aldo is gonna, he's gonna throw, change t tactics a little bit. He's gonna throw a bottle of sunlight. Oh no, sorry, bottle of lightning at the death hound closest to him adjacent to Atticus. There. Nice. Uh, okay. Bottle of lightning, toss, natural 20. Oh, Finally, he's right around back to the around. other way, dude. Finally. You were due. Do we, get a, do we get a fan critical? You are yeah, you want a fan critical? Sure. I'll get you a fan critical. <laughs> I've had enough Goddamn fan fumbles <laughs> last a lifetime. Uh, okay. Um, this one from Brent in Normal, Illinois. Normal. It is titled Thwomp. Uh, you hit the target in their inner thigh and it hits a major artery. Ooh. So double damage and then the target rolls a fortitude save. The femoral, I believe, right? Oh, I believe it would be, eh? Uh, all right, so fortitude save, huh? Fortitude okay. save for the left yeth hound as it hits a femoral artery, I guess. Okay. Uh, Do dogs uh, have femoral arteries? Is every going to be like, a uh, a twenty one, which it's uh, against a, uh, your attack roll, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because we don't confirm. Uh, yeah. Or would it be a bit against my class DC? Yeah, yeah, that's bad, probably better for two. Which I, th uh, which I can <laughs> never remember this. I think I'm I, sure it's like 26. Just say 26. Yeah, 20. It's, it's 26. That's a fail. Yeah, that's a fail. Okay, right, it's a bad so roll. It on a failure, a fail. it takes 1d4 persistent bleed. <laughs> Jeepers. Oh, and great. Okay. So double damage, and it's going to take persistent bleed. Dogs okay. do have femoral artery. Femoral artery. Well, there we, ah. there we go. There we go. Thank you, Brent. It's already taking persistent acid. Now it'll take persistent bleed. Okay. So that is 30 points of electricity damage. Okay. And it is flat-footed. Oh, jeepers. And, oh, wait, uh, let me roll. You know what? Take it all back. Take it all back. I failed the flat check. Oh, <gasps> no. no, you. What? Oh, no. What, what does that mean? Uh, because it means of the it sand hits in Eris. his eyes. 
No, no. no. Stop it. <laughs> he's such a jerk. <laughs> because he's got the sand in his eyes. Sand, oh, sand in my eyes. I forgot about the sand. God damn it! Thanks to the Jen. sand. Is that Jen with two ends, by the way? I know she moved to Maryland, but is Somerville. She from Somerville. No. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, if so, I'd have a word for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Okay. Uh, well, that was just one action. You could crit again. It's true. All right, I'll I'll try again. Go again. Uh, flat check past it. Uh, okay, that is a twenty-eight to hit. Twenty-eight hits. Okay. Uh, okay, so that is 15 points of electricity damage, and the target is flat-footed. Okay. And uh, with my third action, I'm going to do another knowledge check on the, the yellow man. Ah, the yellow, yes. The yellow kid. That <laughs> is... Uh, is that a cult or a yeah, cult? Yeah, cult. Uh, that's a 21. Yeah, you could roll Arcana too. Is like to know more about like what spells does he have, but to know more about him in general. Um, yeah, they don't need to breathe. Um, they have fast healing. Uh, in fact, if you can stop their fast healing, they don't reform on Lang. If they are killed while oh. their fast healing is disabled, they don't reform on the Plateau of Lang. Oh, How do you disable it. fast healing? Would it be would it be acid or something like that, like the way it is in with trolls? 20? Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Um, there must be a way. Um, but I don't know the, the method of that. Um, you just remember reading that in one of your tomes. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I think that's that's really all that's going to help you. You know that their bites can be debilitating because they have, like, underneath that veil, they've got, like, Baraka from Mortal Kombat type mouth, and they, their bites have... Uh, if it takes damage as a t of a type listed in the regeneration entry, its regeneration deactivates until the next until the end of its next turn, including against triggering damage. Okay, so that would be fire and acid for a troll. It probably it, it might be for this. It probably will, it should say. Its dying condition can't increase to a value with kill it as long as its regeneration. If it takes damage of a type listed in the regeneration entry. Yeah, so I'd have to see, because it doesn't say wh what damage stops it, unless I didn't read it. it. I'm guessing it would say, like, fast healing, number, and then parentheses, acid or something, you know, something like, right? And then how we're looking to step You'd on. think, right? It does not say that. Um, but something to think about. Yeah, I don't really think it, we care that much if this guy happens to regenerate. Just out of I guess spite, we're in the dream I mean, land. Yeah, maybe yeah. out of spite. Exactly. Out of spite. spite. But, but I guess we're in the dreamland, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Anyway, that's the end of my turn. Okay. Um, cool. I'm reading uh, the entry on Archives of Nethys to see if it gives more intro info. Um, okay, so that's Aldo's turn. And now it's time for the gauntlet puppies in pain. Um... Let's talk about the Yeth Hound to the north of Ethel. It's going to go after Ethel because Ethel is flat-footed to it. And it's going to start with a juicy bite because it's hungry. This is marmalade, by the way. Fucking natural, too. Just garbage <laughs> rolls. Uh, or is it that Ethel's so skilled? It could be. Um, 28 to hit on the second bite. That does hit. All right, so that one hits. Well, good for me. That's going to be 8 plus 7, 15 points of regular, 5 points of evil, so 20 points of damage. That was my second attack. That's uh, smart. Roll a will save. Okay. You haven't had to roll this against its bite, right? That was just super. Only against the, the howl. Uh, Natty 18, 32. Uh, all right, so you are... That's just, yeah, it's a regular. Um, <laughs> just success. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to throw another bite there. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to do the same thing I did. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, give a bonus to the denizen of Lang. So I'm going to aid the denizen of Lang. Now, the other hound is going to come after Atticus. Um, I'm going to start with a bite. Oh, boy. Oh, baby. 32 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Oh, 
Okay, fantastic. That is going to be, oh boy, max. No, not max. That, oh. that eight looked like a three. Uh, 11 plus seven. That eight uh, looked like a three? Eight. <laughs> <laughs> 18 points of regular, four points of evil, so 22. Uh, uh, I'm going to use my reaction to shield block, uh, and I will get uh, DR10 on the hardness of the shield. Okay. So I'll, I'll remove 10 from that, and you said 22, is that what you said? Yeah, 22, so you'll take 12. I'll Does take the 12. shield take any damage, or where it's magical, it doesn't Shield's work. destroyed. Okay, the shield's destroyed. Uh, and okay. I can't cast it again for 10 minutes when it's broken that way. Now give me a will save. Uh, okay. I don't like it. I don't... I do like it. 31. Regular success. Uh, Stop and then saying. it's going to take two <laughs> actions to try and uh, knock you down with the, with the power of its bite. Uh, so this is going to be against your reflex DC. This is, man, just cannot roll to save my life, uh, 17 against your reflex, Steve, DC. Uh, critical success for me. <laughs> you mean it's a critical fail for me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, you, that's you more I it. felt like I was saving because it was a reflex save. <laughs> but yeah, it is a critical fail. Uh, okay. Which yeah. means you might fall. Yeah, I have to so, read this you now. Yeah, double because, check them rules in. Uh, it would be trip. So on a critical failure, you, you lose your balance and fall and land prone. Yeah. Yes! Oh, I that's that ass fucking great. Hard, dude. And was this, this was who? Poo? Poopy? Uh, this is Poopy. Poopy is, is Poopy. Poopy. Poopy's Poopies. now flat footed and he's about to take persistent acid damage. And uh, he's prone zoning. And he's prone. Um, uh, yeah, he tried to bite it. Atticus is very, don't mistake Atticus. He's a very dexterous, uh, small rat. Uh, damn it. Okay. Uh, I don't know what prone is. I'll just have to. He's make shadow notes later. boxing these shadow hounds. Um, all right. So now I take. Give me the uh, the damage, and I'll roll a d20 to see if I the acid damage get. I actually rolled a 15. So. Uh, is it just okay. four points of damage, or? Ye I, I I actually gave you the damage like right off the bat that should have like waited until his turn. Okay. So, uh, so he sorry. already took it? Yeah, he right, took yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I rolled the 15 to get rid of that, and then this one uh, is coming after Suki. And take uh, the, the persistent acid damage from... At the end of his turn. Okay. How dare you. Huh. Um, oh, poop. That's going to be a 23. Miss. Miss. Uh, I'm going to attack again. And a miss with a fourteen, so brutal. Um, <laughs> Dude, Suki, you've been like front lining, like and nobody's getting business. very lucky because I almost went down <laughs> that other right. round. This one will air walk uh, right over next to Atticus and kind of like uh, at the corner of where Aldo is, uh, leaving Suki alone. And then, and then it, it is, takes its, it then yes. it takes its two acid persistent. Okay, and I it will stay persistent because I rolled a nine. So only two points? Yep. A measly two? A measly okay. two, it's just a cantrip. Takes two points of damage. All right, now it is the denizen of Ling's turn. Uh, I will attempt a survival check to aid from the guy. Fail, so he will not get a bonus from the, uh, the Yeth Hound. However, the denizen of Lang has a look in his eyes. <laughs> Look in his eyes, like even though the battle seems to be turning in your favor, he has something that you don't. And he raises the scimitar to swing at Ethel. And we will see you next week. I knew you were gonna do it, and you I will remember every bit of that persistent damage all week. Yep. You're not getting away with shit. Yeah, don't you yeah, write it down. I'm setting a reminder right now. I am setting I'm a reminder on my calendar. I don't see no persistent damage, I see hearts and bubbles. I'm writing Troy is a stinky liar. Reminder to be a liar. Persistent, lead, plus. On the pound, I'm trying to type so fast. <laughs>